From humble beginnings, Monique LaRue would become a leader, a pioneer, and a titan in the world of Canadian finance. My parents, they had quite an influence uh, on me. I come from a very modest family, but I learned things like hard work, integrity, respect for people, trying to be part of the community, still very, very close to what I'm doing today. For a time, it seemed like a young and talented Monique was destined for a career in classical music. You know, she's a musician. She did her first degree in music. She's a concert pianist, unbelievable pianist. But she discovered that maybe she needed another type of life. So she went to university for accounting. In 1988, LaRue landed her first job in the financial sector. I started uh, as a young chartered accountant with uh, Ernst Young. I had the privilege to work with people who had also very important values. Monique proved to be a prodigy and from one job to the next left a lasting impression on her colleagues and mentors. She had a very positive energy. She was uh, smart, she had vision and was quite accessible. You could have a conversation with her. Even before I knew Monique personally, I thought that she was a very inspiring woman because she was a very ambitious woman. Monique's ambition soon led her straight into the biggest opportunity of her career. One of the most important challenges I had to face is certainly when I was elected Chair of the Board and CEO of Desjardins Group. The Jardin Group is the largest co-op financial institution across Canada. It's uh, 7 million members and clients coast to coast. I was elected in March 2008 and as you may remember, September 2008 was a very bumpy month. We had the worst crisis for the last century, the worst financial crisis. And she said, don't worry about it, uh, I'll manage this, no problem. And uh, again, she doesn't shy away from, these, uh, from those challenges. And it was quite a challenge, in fact, uh, to get this very large and collective organization into a direction that we were able to overcome the financial crisis, make a lot of change into the organization and rally people around me. Her way of engaging people is she commits herself and then she gets everybody to commit as well. That's, that's what makes her a great leader. Je crois que je suis vraiment une personne qui aime les gens. Et euh, au fond, pour moi, toute entreprise, c'est d'abord et avant tout les gens qui la composent. Et le succès d'une entreprise, c'est de pouvoir amener une équipe à faire des choses qu'on ne serait jamais capable de faire seul. Et donc, pour moi, c'est la beauté de la vie de pouvoir être avec les gens. With the crisis behind her, Monique went to work expanding Desjardins. She boosted Desjardins' revenues under her presidency. She built a deep, stronger Desjardins group across Canada. More rigorous, more stable, more capitalized, and with more capacity to invest and to continue our growth. Since leaving Desjardins, Monique continues to be a powerhouse in the world of Canadian finance and still finds time to pursue her life's greatest passions. I'm very happy of that balance between my personal life and professional life. She met Mac at university and they have a daughter, Anne-Sophie, who's unbelievable. 20 years old, really dynamic young lady, very talented at piano also. I think Monique's legacy uh, is to demonstrate that you can be successful in pretty much all aspects of your life if you make a passionate long-term commitment to it. It's the leader that she represents for thousands and thousands of uh, young women. There is a very large number of young women, competent, extremely solid, who will allow us to have a financial sector that will recognize the diversity and recognize, in fond, pleinement the place of women. Some people know her only as a businesswoman. I'm very privileged to know the other life of Monique, and she's just a wonderful human being. I wish we had more like her. Please welcome Monique LaRue, 2018 inductee as companion to the Order of the Canadian Business Hall of Fame.